Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Bible study. I'm Dr. McCoy, and we are walking through the book of Matthew. So welcome. Just know that we also have a conference call line, and so there may be people coming in on our conference call line as well. So we welcome those persons. And you're always welcome to join that line as well. I always place that conference call line on my Facebook page and even on Instagram. So if you need to be reminded of that number, it's always there. Okay. So we're going to continue walking through the book of Matthew. So we are in Matthew chapter 11. And welcome, welcome to you. Hello. I see you all saying hello to me. This is a great chapter. This is the chapter where Jesus makes many claims, okay? So we're going to talk about, or I'm going to talk about the claims of Christ. And remember, if you ever have questions, if you ever have comments, if you want to share, you are welcome to do that, especially when you're live, right? Because we are learning and growing together. So let's open with prayer. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to study your word together once more. God, I pray that you will open our minds and our hearts so that we will be better in understanding who you are. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I hope I gave you time to turn to Matthew 11. Maybe I haven't, so let me try and set this up. So I talked about, uh, or I mentioned how I'm going to focus on the claims of Christ. So many of us know that wherever Jesus went, he created a stir, right? Right. Uh, wherever Jesus went, uh, the blind people saw, the lame people walked, demons left at his command, but there were still varying opinions about who Jesus was. There were people who were like, um, is this the Messiah? Is this the son of God? Is this just another imposter? Um, is this just a pretender, a fraud? And so although Jesus, you know, started like a stir, like created a stir, wherever he went, people still, even after seeing the things that he did, they wondered who he was. And so what we're going to see again in Matthew chapter 11 are the claims of Christ. Even though, uh, even John the Baptist, even though John the Baptist back in Matthew chapter three uh, was really strong in his testimony to the true identity of Jesus Christ, we're going to find in this chapter that even John is going to be in prison and wondering. He's going to be wondering, you all. He's going to wonder, uh, did he make a mistake? He's going to wonder, could this really be the Messiah, you know, while he's in uh, prison? I mean, could the Messiah, could this person really be treated so harshly? Uh, did it all make sense? And so we're going to see how even John the Baptist is wondering who Jesus, is this really the Jesus, you know, um, that he first thought that he was. And so Jesus is going to answer John's painful uh, questions by, you know, pointing to a series of uh, things or work and preaching and healing uh, that he did. And so that's what he's going to do for John. And so uh, we're going to see a lot in chapter 11, and it, it kind of rolls over to chapter 12, some of Jesus' claims as well. But I hope I talked enough to have you have enough time to get to Matthew chapter 11, okay? And I'm going to be reading from the Contemporary English Version, and I'll also use the King James Version as we look at this. And so he's going to claim some things like um, he was the one through whom people uh, could know the father. He is the rest giver. And I'm going to really talk about that. Um, the Lord of the Sabbath, God's chosen servant, the son of man. So let's see about Jesus's claims in Matthew chapter 11. So again, welcome. If you're just joining, if you're joining a little later, that's OK, because the Bible is available to available to us all the time. OK, so let's look here. The Bible talks first about John the Baptist in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse uh, one there. The Bible says that after Jesus had finished instructing his 12 disciples, he left and began teaching and preaching in the towns. You see that? John was in prison, as I mentioned, verse two, John was in prison when he heard what Christ was doing. So John sent some of his followers to ask Jesus, are you the one we should, you know, are you the one we should be looking for or must we wait for someone else? Now, I'm so used to reading that in the King James version of scripture um, that I think I want to do that. So if you have the King James version there, uh, I want you to look at verse uh, three, the way it's written there. 
uh, says, and said unto him, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? So there's John the Baptist in prison, and he's starting to question or he's wondering about Jesus. Although we read back in chapter 3 that John had a pretty strong testimony about who Jesus was, right? But let's stop and think about this. Before I keep reading, before I keep reading, let's think about this. Because some people would read this and they would be like, well, how is John going to go from a strong testimony and then all of a sudden, now he's, you know, having second thoughts about Jesus's identity. Well, let's think about the context. John is in prison. Now, maybe you've never been in a physical prison, but let's just imagine. Okay, we have said Jesus is who Jesus is, but then we find ourselves in prison. And we know that the Lord is still doing some powerful things, but right now we're in prison. Maybe you've not been in a physical prison, but like jo like John is right now in Matthew 11, I've just read verses 1 to 3. But have you ever been in a prison situation in your life and you've wondered about God? You don't have to be honest. Okay, you don't have to be honest, you know, with anyone else, but you can be honest with yourself. Maybe you've been in a prison of sickness and you've wondered. Is God really the God who heals? Like I've read about and I've heard those preachers preaching about and the Sunday school teachers teaching about. Maybe you've been in a prison of sickness. Maybe you've been a, in a prison of financial distress. Is God really the provider? You know, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, you know, like people have said and like I read in my Bible. Maybe you've been in a prison where you've had difficulty in relationships. Is God really the God that says love one another and there are actually people who follow that? Because I don't know about this God. Okay, so before we, you know, start thinking, well, how can John the Baptist be that way? Let's think about how we may be that way at certain times in our lives. So if you are in a prison situation in your life right now, I want you to continue to listen to this word. Because let's see how God, how Jesus responds to John the Baptist prison situation where in his in prison state he starts to question who God is verse 4 Jesus answered as John is wondering are you the one or should we look for another Jesus answered in verse 4 go and tell John what you have heard and seen the blind are now able to see, the lame can walk, people with leprosy are being healed, and the deaf can hear. The dead are raised to life, and the poor are hearing the good news. Verse number six, God will bless everyone who doesn't reject me because of what I do. So I want to encourage you, you know, based on what the word is saying right now, if you are like John the Baptist and you're not in a physical prison, but you are in a prison in your mind, in your bank account, in your health, in your relationships, then know that the way that God answers your moment of wonder is not to cast you aside. That's not what God is doing. You know, sometimes with people, you start wondering about me and I may get upset with you. <laughs> and I'll say to you, oh, you don't think I am who I say I am? Well, then we, we just fall out, right? We just fall out with people. No, no, no. God does not want to fall out with you. God wants you to know that God is going to bless you when you don't reject God because of what, what God does. So maybe in your life right now, God, you have not received what you consider to be a healing in your body. You're still sick. Maybe you have not received the kind of money or financial breakthrough that you want. Maybe your relationships, all these things, you're just sitting there. And you're just like, God, do I need to follow some other type of religion? <laughs> Let's just be honest here. This Christian thing is just not, I don't know about this. You know, this whole Jesus stuff. I don't know about this. Remember that Jesus has already said that when we don't reject Jesus, we will be blessed because of what Jesus does. So even if it's not happening in my life right now, I am blessed adjacent, which means that God is still in the healing process. God is still in the providing process. God is still in the business of mending relationships because God is doing it in the lives of other people. So just because it may not have happened for me right now, I don't give up because I am going to be blessed when I don't reject what God does, even if it's not happening for me right now. That is a word on this evening because I am not making that claim. Christ has already made that claim. So let's look at the other claims of Jesus Christ. 
So as we keep looking at this, God will bless everyone who doesn't reject Jesus because of what Jesus does. Okay, so don't focus so much on yourself, but on the Lord. So as we keep looking, what Jesus does is Jesus starts to describe John the Baptist. Hello there, Miss Tish. I see you. Uh, God, God, Jesus starts to describe John the Baptist both by what John was and by what he wasn't. So remember I said, just because we have this sense of wonder as human beings does not mean that God tosses us aside. So now what Jesus does is starts to talk to John's followers, okay, as they were going away. Now, they may have been able to hear it. Now, they're walking away. But as they walk away, Jesus starts to speak to the crowd about John. So have you ever been walking away from a situation, but you can still like over here? <laughs> so maybe John's followers heard some of this, but the Bible says that they're going away. Jesus speaks to the crowd and starts to say, what sort of person did you go out into the desert to see? Because remember now, these people have heard these other folks, John's followers say that John is now wondering, and they may hear that as John is now doubting. So see, Jesus doesn't want these people to go away thinking negatively about John. John had a moment, but let's not think negatively about John. Uh, what sort of person did you go out into the desert to see? Was he like tall grass blown about by the wind? He started to talk about what John wasn't and what he isn't. Uh, okay, uh, what kind of man did you go out to see? Verse 8. Was he someone dressed in fine clothes? That's not who John was. So let's remember who this man is, okay? He may have a moment of weakness, but let's remember who he is. Uh, uh, people who dress like that, uh, you know, in fine clothes, those people, Jesus says, uh, people who dress like that live in king's palace, in the king's palace. Verse 9, what did you really go out to see? Was he a prophet? He certainly was. Look at that. <laughs> so what is this teaching us? What is this teaching us? When I read this, this description is significant because, again, what Jesus is doing is taking up for John the Baptist, taking up for this man of God. He's still a man of God. So he's reminding them of who John is. Now, let, let, let's look. Let's keep looking at this because in verse 14, uh, we see here as Jesus is talking, he says, and if you believe them, John is Elijah, the prophet. Uh, you are waiting for. Uh, he says, if you have ears, pay attention. Understand that when we read Malachi, because we did read uh, Malachi together. Remember, we went through both the uh, minor prophets and the major prophets, right? So if you're just joining this Bible study, then guess what? You remember too. This is our Bible study. So if you miss that, you just go back and 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 uh, see what we were talking about. But in Malachi chapter four, verse five. Malachi predicts that Elijah, the prophet, will reappear in Israel before uh, the great uh, and the dreadful day of the Lord. So that's why he mentions Elijah. But I really want to get to where, uh, as Jesus is talking about John the Baptist, what's interesting is, if you look at verse 16, verse 16, Jesus says something to this crowd. Jesus says, you people are like children sitting in the market and shouting to each other. We played the flute, but you would not dance. We sang a funeral song, but you would not mourn. Do you see that? Verse 17, verse 18, Jesus says, still talking about John the Baptist. He said, John the Baptist did not go around eating and drinking. And you said, that man has a demon in him. Verse 19, but the son of man goes around eating and drinking and you say that man eats and drinks too. He even, he's even a friend to tax collectors and sinners. And then Jesus says, yet wisdom is shown to be right by what it does. So what Jesus is saying to these people is regardless of what you've now heard about John the Baptist, Remember that there was a time when you said, we, you know, like children, we play the flute, but you don't dance and we sing, but you don't mourn. John the Baptist didn't go around eating and drinking and doing all of those things. You wanted people to do that when you played the flute and when you sang songs. And when they didn't do it, you had a problem with that, right? You had a problem with that. And you said that th this man has a demon in him. Well, then whenever I eat and drink, with, with sinners and I receive everybody, you have something to say about that. 
So what Jesus is doing is helping them to look at themselves because Jesus knows the way of human beings. Again, going back, you heard this about John the Baptist, so you're going to be focused on him. But I want you to look at yourselves because you are like children. You're like children. So before you start thinking about John the Baptist, think about what you've done toward John the Baptist and think about what you've even done toward me. And what you need to realize is that wisdom itself, wisdom itself is shown to be right by what it does. So you need to start paying attention to what is happening around you. You need to start paying attention to what the men of God are actually doing. You're seeing wisdom in action. You saw it. You've seen it. Wisdom in action. So then this raises a question for us on this evening. When was the last time you paid attention to wisdom in action? Because people were trying to get you to look at people in so many different types of ways. And even in their weakness, people were trying to get you to look at all of that. But the activity of wisdom, many times we miss. So what Jesus is doing is being sure that, that they see that wisdom is proven present by what a person does. So don't forget that. <laughs> don't forget what wisdom looks like when it's around you. Okay, so I like the way that Jesus, and that was just Jesus talking about John the Baptist. I just appreciate the way that Jesus talked about John the Baptist because John sent a message to Jesus through other people while in prison. <laughs> You know, to say, who, who, you know, should we look for another? Think about the ramifications of that. Think about what the people in the crowd may have been thinking because of that. <laughs> so Jesus makes sure that they are focused on the right thing. Make the main thing the main thing. So then let's move on. Let's move on. Now, as Jesus stops talking about John the Baptist, he begins to talk about these unbelieving towns. Look at verse 20. In the towns where Jesus had worked most of, most of his miracles, the people refused to turn to God. Listen to that now. The towns where Jesus had worked most of his miracles, the people refused to turn to God. So Jesus was upset with them and he said, so this is where he's going to mention ancient villages, okay? These unbelieving uh, towns. He says, you people of Chorazin are in trouble. He says, you people of Bethsaida are in trouble too. If the miracles that took place in your towns had happened in Tyre and, and Sidon, and we've talked about those before, so I won't go into that. The people there, they would have turned to God long ago. They would have dressed in sackcloth and put ashes on their heads. We've talked about that before too. We know that that's uh, in Jesus's day, that's how people show repentance. So we already know that. So I won't spend a lot of time on that. He says in verse 22, I tell you that on the day of judgment, the people of Tyre and Sidon will get off easier than you. And we know the history behind Tyre and Sidon. People of Capernaum, you do you think you will be honored in heaven? So he's simply upset with these people again because they are not they are refusing to turn to God. He says, you will go down to hell uh, if the miracles that took place in your town had happened in Sodom, and we know about Sodom, right? That town would have still been standing. So I tell you that on the day of judgment, the people of Sodom would get off easier than you. What an insult. So let, let's move on. Let's move on. Because I really want to focus on this last part of our lesson for this evening. It's the last part of uh, Matthew chapter, chapter uh, 11. So let's look at verses 25 to 28. Okay? This is a really clear chapter, right? <laughs> and I hope you're following me so that you can see that everything I'm saying is just simply there. Come to me and rest. Now, I'm going to spend some time on this. So after Jesus spoke to the crowd um, and issued this judgment, you know, um, on these unrepentant uh, cities, towns, ancient villages, whatnot, uh, he thanked his he heavenly father. That's what he's going to do now. He's going to thank his heavenly father for revealing the truth about him, uh, you know, to little children. Mm. He's going to thank his heavenly father for revealing the truth about him to little children, okay? Now, I want you to think about this question. Why does God not reveal the truth to the wise and the learned? Why does God not reveal the truth to the wise and the educated? 
because that's what we're about to see. God is not revealing the truth to the wise and the educated or the learned. So let's look at this. At that moment, Jesus said, he's, he's talking to God, my father, Lord of heaven and earth, I'm grateful that you hid all this from wise and educated people and showed it to ordinary people, which is calling children. Yes, father, that is what pleased you. Verse 27, my father has given me everything and he is the only one who knows the son. The only one who truly knows the father is the son, but the son wants to tell others about the father so they can know him too. If you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. That's an imitation, everybody. Take the yoke I give you. Put it upon your shoulders and learn from me. That's an invitation, everybody. I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. That's a guarantee, everybody. That's a promise. This yoke is easy to bear, and this burden is light. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. So, I want us to think of how... Rest. How is rest for our souls, rest for our hearts, rest for our minds a great need, as great a need as in Jesus' day? So if Jesus is saying this in Jesus' day, then how much more is this important in our day? I want us to think of areas where we need to find rest. Now, let's consider the way Jesus talks about it. Jesus says, if you are tired from carrying burdens, it's not just about working all day and I'm tired. <laughs> no, no, no. It can be that, but that is not immediately what Jesus is talking about. He says, if you're tired, this is the invitation. If you're tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. So think of areas in your life where you need to find rest and you need to meditate on Jesus's invitation to you. Okay, let's think about that. This is why I wanted to have enough time towards the end of our Bible study to deal with this because not enough of us, first of all, think about the burdens that we're carrying. Okay, um, we don't think about it in a detailed way. Because many times in the Christian experience, you're not supposed to think about that. You know, you're supposed to focus on God. Like when you go to church, you just focus on God. You focus on serving. You focus on, you know, worshiping. You focus on uh, doing the work of the church. And you do that to the point where you don't think about the Jesus of the church. Many of our churches, our faith communities are not really following the way that Jesus has laid out Christianity, the way that it is to follow in the way. <laughs> According to Jesus Christ, there is an invitation. So then when you go to church, it's okay for you to do all that service. You can sing on the choir. You can be an usher. You can do all that is wonderful. And if you don't accept the invitation to where when you get there, you will have that burden because you're carrying it. Okay, you're carrying a heavy burden. So if you just go to church and work, <laughs> okay, and I know that we need to be doing that. I get that, okay? I get the service part of church. And a lot of us need to even go to church, right? I'm saying when you get there, if you are carrying a heavy burden and you sang on the choir all day, but you didn't leave that burden, you didn't accept the invitation. So when we get to church, those who are not believers have an extended invitation to come to Christ. You've already come to Christ. Your invitation is to let the Lord carry that heavy load. Okay? So how are you examining your need to put that burden down? First, you need to, this is the first step, you need to identify the heavy burden that you're carrying. That's the first thing. And that takes bravery. Because again, as a Christian, you, you don't really do that, right? You just trust in the Lord and go to church. <laughs> trust in the Lord and go to Bible study. Trust in the Lord and believe. Now I'm talking about activating your faith, okay? Those things are practices that keeps you connected to God. 
Every day, you're supposed to be in relation with God. Those are great tools to stay connected. But once you, you go to church once a week, maybe. You might go twice if you go to Bible study. Uh, what about the, and it's for like however many hours. What about all the hours? And I wish I would have calculated that. How many hours are in a week? And then how many hours are you in church? Okay. Our Bible study is 30 minutes on a Thursday. If you have a relationship with God, that's not enough. You have to cultivate that relationship. So when you have a great relationship with the God who loves you, you need to start identifying what the burdens are so that you can accept the invitation to give it to that God. But if you're not even thinking about it because you're just up in the air, then you're still carrying some things. So on this evening, I want to really encourage you to think about how you, you know, how rest for your soul, your heart and your mind is a requirement if you're following Jesus Christ. Are you not going to accept all of the invitations? If you've only accepted the invitation to become saved, that's not enough. Because now you have to go through the sanctification process. B becoming saved means that you became justified. But now you are being sanctified. And in being sanctified, there is some activity that happens with your faith. See that? And then you'll be glorified, you know, when you get that glorified body, you know, whenever you get to heaven. But you're not there yet. So what's the burden? That's the first step. The second step, and I didn't write this down. This is coming to me, thanks be to God. <laughs> okay, let me read it again so the Lord can help me some more. Okay, so if you are tired from carrying heavy burdens, come to me and I will give you rest. So first, I need to recognize what the burden is. Take the yoke I give you give you put it on your shoulders and learn from me okay so the first step is acknowledging what the burden is the second step is to learn from going to church and hearing those wonderful sermons going to bible study and learning all of those things now if jesus is saying learn from me that means now i need to put into practice that which i have learned so that means that if I'm going to church and I'm hearing those sermons and I never, uh, you know, I never put what I've learned into practice, then what am I doing? That's why I'm still carrying the heavy burden because I have not identified it and I have not accepted the invitation to learn from Jesus. OK, what does rest look like with Jesus? So let's see what I've learned. The Bible says that there were many times when Jesus would go off to a solitary place. Maybe you're around too many people, too many, too much of the time. Mm -hmm. You need to get by yourself. There you go. I learned that from Jesus. Okay. So I'm carrying a burden. I identify it. Then I learn from Jesus. Jesus rested by being alone. Jesus also rested by having only a certain uh, people, amount of people maybe around him. The Bible says Peter, James, and John would go with him many times. So maybe when it comes to your circle, you could possibly have too large of a circle. All of those people are not your friends. They are your associates. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. Everybody's not meant to be in your inner circle, right? They can be in your outer circle. Okay. So I've identified the burden. I've learned what rest looks like. You know, it, it means by myself sometimes. And then it means with a few friends, right? Who I really know are friends, okay? Okay. Let's see what else Jesus is saying. Jesus says, okay. Okay, I identify the burden. So I've accepted the invitation. Um, even if I take it with me to church, I'm going to leave it at the altar. Then I'm going to learn what rest looks like from the Lord. I'm going to be sure that I have time by myself and that I have some good friends around. Maybe three, that's what he had, right? Okay, then he had 12 disciples and all. Okay, let's see what else here. Learn from me. I am gentle and humble and you will find rest. Ah, you will find rest. Okay, so then if I want to find something, that means I have to look for it. <laughs> we just think rest is something that just comes, right? It may, but Jesus is saying, you will find rest. I am gentle and humble. You will find rest. So that means when I go to the Lord in honesty, I will find rest. Maybe we haven't been looking for rest. What does rest look like? If rest was something you could you could you could put your hand on something you could actually see. I'm looking for it. What does it look like? So then that means that I'm not going to make it just something that, uh, you know, we say, well, the Lord gives me rest. OK, what does that really look like when you find it? 
What does it look like? If I'm looking for something and I find it, it's like I can almost touch it. So maybe rest looks like, for me, listening to music. I found a song that brings me peace. There you go. Maybe rest looks like I found a meal. They're called it comfort food. Thank you, God. Yeah, I found a comfort food. Hmm. I encourage you to find rest. You already, you already know where the Lord is. God ain't ever been lost, right? So you don't find Jesus, right? But man, isn't that something? I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest. That's a promise to stand on, but you have to be looking for it to find it. Find that song that gives you peace. Yeah. Hmm. And then that last verse, this yoke is easy to bear and this burden is light. So then whenever we identify what the burden is, you know, we leave it at the altar or we just leave it right there. You know, um, we identify it takes a lot of bravery to do that. Um, when we learn from the Lord, um, when we accept the invitation and when we go and find rest. Wow. We will know that the Lord is is able to carry that burden because to the Lord, it's light. It's not heavy. So why don't you give it to the Lord today? <laughs> why don't you let the Lord handle it? Why don't you accept the invitation? Okay. And I can tell you, I've accepted the invitation and I am so grateful to God that I have found rest. It took me a while to think about how to look for it, but I found rest. And so I'm grateful to God for being a healer. You know, I dealt with that COVID-19 thing for the third time. But I'm so grateful that even being sick this time, I actually had medicine this time. So it was a blessing from the Lord. The other two times I didn't. So I wasn't in here crawling to the bathroom this time. Thanks, thanks, thanks be to God. But I can honestly say that even though I got sick again or whatever, I wasn't laying there saying, oh, I just need to rest. Or, oh, I do, you know. No, I found rest. So, I hope that you will be, yes, Sister Michelle, in search of rest if you haven't found it already. Because when you get over here to this side, like me, and you found rest, there's also, yes, Sister Dorothy, a peace of mind that comes along with it. So I hope you find it, okay? So I hope this Bible study has been uh, helpful on this evening. And I want to thank you all for praying for me, you know, um, and I am well, I'm doing great. I'm so grateful to God. And I believe these claims of Christ. Let's pray. God, thank you so very much for this opportunity to read your word, to study your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding our Bible study. Thank you, God, for helping every person here find rest, helping every person here discover the heavy burden that they may be carrying. And even if they're not, help someone else to discover what it is so that they will accept the invitation to give it to you. There is a great need in our day to truly, 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 truly find rest and meditate on your invitation. So thank you, God, for being patient with us. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, God bless you all. I hope you get some rest tonight. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And uh, on next week, I have a uh, presentation that I get to do. And so I don't know if it'll be live or anything, but uh, but our Bible study will be postponed until the next Thursday, okay? Um, because I don't see how I can be in two places at one time. Nope, can't do it. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll be able to get something uh, out to you, but just know that I appreciate your prayers. It's going to be a good week, uh, uh, remainder of the week. It's going to be a good remainder of September. And oh, October is coming. And that's going to be great too. So I hope you're as excited as I am. Have a great evening and thank you for being here. Get you some rest. <laughs>